Yes, indeed. All right. So the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Reading coming in at 55.1 in this preliminary reading for the month of August. And as we're receiving this data and looking through it, the consumer sentiment moved up very slightly this month, about five index points they're mentioning above the all-time low that was reached in June. And so as we're looking through this data, the markets somewhat reacting, but not very much, especially considering we've been fractionally higher for the trading activity thus far, 31 minutes in today's trading activity. We also want to bring in Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung, who is helping us break this down just a little bit more on this initial reading. Yeah, so uh, this is a beat. Uh, Wall Street only expected 52.5, so this number being higher than that at 55.1 shows an American consumer that maybe is a bit more optimistic than Wall Street had expected. Keep in mind, though, this is still historically a low number on the University of Michigan's read, uh, although it is a notch up from the all-time low that we had seen on this index of 51.5 in the month of July. So a little bit of a bounce back, but still a long ways to go. Uh, the surveys of Consumers Director Joanne Sue over at the University of Michigan saying, quote, all components of the expectations index improved this month, particularly, interestingly, among low and middle income consumers for whom inflation is particularly salient. Interestingly, though, they noted that higher income people, which generate a disproportionate share of spending, actually registered some declines in how they're assessing their current personal finances as well as buying conditions. So uh, overall, it seems like maybe markets can take a little bit of solace in saying, again, to be determined, but maybe July was the bottom, as could be thematic to inflation as well. Consumer sentiment climbing back is certainly a good thing. But again, at 55.1, still relatively low. Brian, you mentioned that high income consumer nugget. That, that definitely registered with me as well. I have not seen or heard that before. All we have heard in recent weeks is how the high end consumer is keeping uh, this economy afloat, uh, especially at various retailers. I mean, what would be driving that? Well, that's an interesting question, and we'd have to kind of look at the other qualitative data to try to put together a narrative. But one possible explanation of this could be certainly the fact that, you know, gas prices coming down in the month of July were more impactful for the lower income Americans who spend a larger share of their income just putting the fuel in their car to get to work. Whereas other types of agnostic inflation categories and expenditures for higher income people, which might not be as noticeable as increasing or decreasing gas prices, uh, that story of inflation is still very much true because as we saw from the CPI index earlier this week, inflation may have essentially plateaued between June and July, but the year over year prices are still eight and a half percent higher than they were a year ago. So right. those are still lived experiences. And again, I think that we have to uh, just kind of baseline here and make sure that, okay, yeah, we got to tick up in consumer sentiment, this arbitrary number that, you know, a survey of 500 people seems to gather. But at the same time, look, any sort of bounce back that you can see in any sort of economic data, especially which is thematic to other economic data that we've gotten for the month of July, seems to be going marginally in the right direction for the Federal Reserve. To your point, the the survey director, Joanne Shu, had mentioned that with continued declines in energy prices as well, the median expected year ahead inflation rate fell to 5 percent. Lowest reading since February, still well above the 4.6 percent reading from a year ago. And then they also end the note with saying that still the share of consumers that are actually blaming inflation right now for eroding their living standards that remained near 48 percent. So it's very, very much still in the psyche of the consumer, but it's a matter of believing or whether it's seeing or believing, I should say, if inflation has actually plateaued as we were discussing a moment ago. Yeah, and you bring up the inflation aspect of this report because, you know, what we were just talking about with that 55.1 number is kind of just overall consumer uh, sentiment. But you, as you mentioned, this survey does also collect data on how people feel inflation could develop over not just the next year, but over the next five to 10 years as well. What we really want to focus on is the year ahead inflation expectations. And look, Americans expect 5% inflation over the next year. That's still well above the 2% that the Federal Reserve would like to see. That's optimistic. And what that would imply a, a pretty sharp come down still because, again, eight and a half is what we saw on a year over year basis in the month of July. But look, when you consider that Americans in July were expecting 5.1% inflation, seeing that number come down to 5% is certainly a good thing. Again, 0.1% is not that large. You would like to see an even smaller number on that. But this is important because if consumers have lower expectations for inflation in the future. They're not going to be as panicked to try to pull forward expenditure and consumption now, which could further actually create the self-fulfilling cycle of 
higher inflation in the present, those would be good things. But again, far from mission accomplished on all of this, and we'll have to see how the expectations well, Brian, I'm, I'm stocking up on whey protein. I, don't, I do not trust <laughs> that it's going to get cheaper in the back half of the year. I suggest Come you two man. as well. What I do you see do? Do you, do you do the gold standard? No, I'm stocking it all up. I, I like, the, I like the vanilla. I like the vanilla I stuff. like chocolate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Each his own. All right. Well, I'm going to try both of them, and I'll be the uh, guest. Blend them. Yeah. I, I will blend them both together. <laughs> yes. Brian, thanks for helping us break this down this morning.